I love that song. Let's echo it again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, our risen Savior, Jesus. On this great day of resurrection and victory, the title of the message I have for you is called, it's called One Foot in the Grave. And as I often do, especially on Easter, I begin with a story. Now this is a story of three rabbits. Their names were Foot, 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 and Foot. And no kidding. And so one fine summer day, these three rabbits, Foot, 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 and Foot, they were all in their rabbit den playing their rabbit games. When suddenly Foot, Foot looked at Foot, 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 and Foot and said, I'm hungry. You know what, said Foot, 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 and Foot? We're hungry too. But where can we get any food? Foot said uh, Foot, 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 and Foot, Foot. I know, said Foot, Foot. Farmer Brown's got a cabbage patch. We can hop over there and have all we want. So, foot, 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 and foot all hopped over to Farmer Brown's cabbage patch and started happily munching away when suddenly, foot, foot, foot heard, I see you rabbits, and this time I'm going to get you for sure. Run for your lives, foot, foot, foot said to foot, foot, and foot, and they did. Foot, 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 and foot started running for their lives. Now, because foot, 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 foot were older and faster rabbits than foot. They made the rabbit den first. And just as they did, they thought foot was right behind them. All of a sudden, they heard kapow. And in a few moments, foot, 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 and foot, foot looked out of their rabbit den. And to their great dismay, there they saw poor foot lying there dead, killed by the shotgun blast of Farmer Brown. So foot, foot said to foot, 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 we can't just leave little foot out there. We've got to give him a proper rabbit burial. So... Foot, 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 and foot, foot, dragged foot over to a beautiful patch of meadow, and they dug a hole, and they placed him in, and just as they were about done covering him up, foot, foot said to foot, 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 you know what, all this work is making me hungry again. What do you say we go back over to Farmer Brown's and munch on some more of that cabbage? Foot, foot, exclaimed foot, 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 are you crazy? Can't you see that we already have one foot in the grave? <laughs> wow <laughs> thank you <laughs> you know what one of our choir members said if you count up all those feet you'd be six feet under <laughs> but it is true we do have one foot in the grave Literally, as Christians, we live every day with one foot in the grave. From the moment we became Christian and that robe of righteousness was placed upon us, the devil, the world, and our flesh has been hotly pursuing us, hounding us, chasing us down, putting us in its crosshairs, and eventually, through sickness and mortal weakness, we will succumb. We live as people in this fallen world already with one foot in the grave, and we're not alone. Consider our Egyptian brothers and sisters who last weekend had their Palm Sunday celebrations, and forgive this expression, but blown apart by suicide bombers who destroyed two churches and 44 lives. Consider the scourge of drugs upon our community that takes lives, is no respecter of age, which is about the worst thing I've ever seen in my ministry. About the worst thing you can imagine is the scourge of drugs. Consider how our streets have become unsafe, even for the police. I mean, I'm telling you, we already live with one foot in the grave, and I'm not trying to be morbid when I say that, but as Christians, we have nowhere to run. We have no den into which we can hop and hide. Death and the grave will eventually have their moment and for a time have their way. God knew this, and God didn't want it to be like this. And so our loving God, in great love, did something about it. He sent His Son, Jesus, Son of the eternal God, to be born of the Virgin Mary. That is, real flesh and blood. 
of the same substance and stuff as you and me. Why? So that he was killable. So that he could die. And we saw this on Good Friday. Christ Jesus on the cross dying. Giving up his spirit. His blood pouring out. Asphyxiation taking over. Christ on the cross dying for the sins of all the world. Now, the Romans came by, and just to make sure, we saw they thrust the spear into his side. But when they came to Jesus, they didn't do like they did with the other two thieves crucified alongside of him. They did not break his legs. Why? Because they could see he was already dead. And so his followers petitioned Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, for the body of Jesus. And they took that lifeless, limp body off the cross, and they put it in a clean linen shroud, and they stuck it in a newly hewn tomb. And that, for the moment, as we say, is that, was that. Death and the grave had their moment. Jesus, the eternal Son of God, but born of the Virgin Mary, was what? He was dead. But then, something happened. Sometime during the night, a seismic shaking of the earth took place, so violent that it broke the seals of the tomb. And as Matthew tells us, an angel from heaven descends and rolls back that massive stone. And then, a second seismic shaking. Matthew uses the same language, this time, of the guards who witnessed these events, and they trembled. Did you catch that? seeing these events, and they became like dead men. Meanwhile, the angel, according to Matthew, sits somewhat triumphantly, victoriously upon that stone, so that when the women come to the tomb to see the body of Jesus, he can tell them, he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come on, take a look, and then go and tell the others. And friends, This is the whole reason that we celebrate today. You see, Jesus Christ is the first one ever to rise to live immortal. He is immortal, flesh and blood, living our God of the same substance of us, true God and true man, never though to die again, no longer killable, His flesh and blood will never again succumb to weakness and death. Unlike Lazarus and others who were raised to life in New Testament or even Old Testament times, you know, they had two feet in the grave at one time just like Jesus, but they were raised to life. But unlike them, Jesus would never die again. For him, death has been pushed backwards. Death has been reversed. And to prove this, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus stands with two feet in the path to meet the women. His feet are mentioned. Did you notice that? They they clasp them in worship, but he's no ghost. He's no apparition. This is real life, flesh and blood, Savior who's standing there, the first one ever to rise to immortality, never to die again. And now you see, there's immense implication for you and me. And you already know what it is. Because Christ Jesus rose to live a life immortal, so will you. So will you and me and all who trust in Christ Jesus for our salvation. We too will rise at his coming and live with two feet on the ground in the new heavens and the new earth when our bodies are raised at Christ's return. The Bible says that Jesus is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. You know know what that means, right? It's the agricultural term. It's the promise of the future harvest. Because he's the first fruits. He's the first one ever to rise immortal. This means that there's more that's going to come. That's you and me and all who trust in Christ. That we will rise at his coming and live with two feet on the ground. A life that is eternal and immortal just like his. Now the Old Testament man Job who lived at least a thousand years before Jesus. Is the one who tells us. I know that my Redeemer lives. 
and in the end, he will stand upon the earth. But Job goes, goes on to say more. He says, and this I know, in my flesh I will see God. I will see him with my own eyes and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Job knew that his Savior would go on living after death, and because he would do that, so would Job, and so will you. Martin Luther was the great reformer of the church back several centuries ago. He said, he said this, now listen, listen carefully. He says, the Christian already enjoys the advantage of being out of the grave with his right leg. Moreover, he has a mighty helper who holds out his hand to him, namely his Lord Jesus Christ, who himself left the grave entirely a long time ago. And now he takes the Christian by the hand and he pulls him more than halfway out so that only his left leg remains in it. For his sin has already been remitted and expunged. God's wrath has already been extinguished. He already lives fully with Christ with regard to his best part, which is his soul, as he partakes of eternal life. And therefore, death can no longer hold on to him. Only the remnant, the old skin, flesh, and blood, must still decay before it too can be renewed and follow the soul. And as for the rest... The rest is already penetrated all the way into life since Christ and my soul are no longer in death. Friends, you, by faith, have already penetrated all the way into life. Death cannot hold on to you. Yes, it is all around. And we have become all too unnaturally familiar with it. But you are alive in the gospel. This has changed you. His forgiveness has made you new, and as citizens of the heavenly kingdom, you have the promise that at his coming, you will rise with two feet on the ground. Friends, be like the angel who resides victoriously while all others around him may tremble. Be like the women who rush to summon, summon their Christian brothers the uh, male disciples with the good news of the gospel rush to the side of those who are facing persecution. Stand with those in the, in the path of destruction. Reach out your hand to those in need and help them out of the grave and sing into the ears of all who will listen. Arise, my love, for the grave no longer has a hold on you. There was a father and a son who were once driving past a beautiful meadow that was filled with headstones. And as a five-year-old boy alone can say to his father, seeing a fresh mound of dirt, turned to his dad and said, look, dad, one got out. Well, the next time you drive past the cemetery, whether you see a fresh mound of dirt or not, you remember the one who got out for you. And the next time you sense the devil, the world, or your flesh, the hot breath upon your neck, hounding you, hotly pursuing you, you remember your sin has been expunged. And hell and God's fury over sin has been completely extinguished. And even though you live with one foot in the grave, you remember it's only one. And it's only until Christ returns and by his grace calls you forth from death to life and you begin to live that immortal life with him, with two feet on the ground. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now may the peace of God, which, that, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ to life eternal. Amen.